How's it going, everybody? I am Josh, amateur radio call sign KI6NAZ. Today, we are wrapping up the technician license question pool video series. There is a playlist down below. It will take you to every one of the videos for every sub element of the new question pool, which goes from 2022 through 2026. So congratulations if you are interested in getting your amateur radio license. Hopefully these videos help you out. The best way to enjoy these videos is to go to hamstudy.org, start taking some practice tests, and it will tell you pretty quickly what sub elements you need the most help in. Then come back to the videos and watch along. All right, sub element 10. It's time to talk safety. We're gonna wrap things up by making sure you stay safe out there on the air, or particularly when you're mucking around with antennas or your power sources or a myriad of other things. So Alpha Zero One, which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12 volt storage battery? And it is B, shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. So don't be jumping your battery terminals, positive and negative. Can't imagine we have to say that, but I'm sure we do. <laughs> Alpha Two, what health hazard is presented by electrical current flowing through your body? It is D. All of these choices are correct. It may cause injury by heating tissue. Sure. Uh, B. It may disrupt the electrical functions of the cells. Sure. C. It may cause involuntary muscle contractions. All along the process of hurting you greatly while doing it. Alpha zero 03. In the United States, what circuit does black wire insulation indicate in a three wire 120 volt cable? And the answer is B, hot. So keep that in mind. Alpha zero four, what is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? And it is B, to remove power in case of overload. Uh, very important, the power leads on your radio should have a fused connector to do just that. Save your radio, that's the most important thing. Fuses are cheap, buy fuses, burn out fuses, no problem. Just don't blow up your radios. Alpha zero five, why should a five ampere fuse never be replaced with a 20 ampere fuse? And the answer is C, excessive current could cause a fire, meaning you've removed the fail point of the fuse by stepping it up from five to 20 amps. You want the fuse to fail. You shouldn't uh, cheat the whole system by putting a stronger fuse in line. So. Don't, don't mess with that. Seriously, we're talking about your radio. These things are expensive. Alpha 06, what is a good way to guard against electrical shock at your station? A, use a three wire cord and plugs for all AC powered equipment. We're talking about one with a ground lug on it. B, connect all AC powered station equipment to a common safety ground. Yes, indeed, always be grounding your station. And C, install mechanical interlocks in high voltage circuits. Sure. Alpha 07, where should a lightning arrestor be installed in a coaxial feed line? And the answer is D, on a grounded panel near where the feed line enters the building. Very important that um, in dealing with lightning, which of course, if we can pick up signals, we can also pick up lightning with our antennas. We wanna make sure that we have a ground solution and an appropriate lightning arrestor in line in the coax and have that system be about where the feed line enters your property. Extra points if you have a far off antenna on a mast or whatever that you ground that and then also have a lightning arrestor there and then another one as it gets closer to your shack or where it enters the your property, your home. Alpha 08, where should a fuse or circuit breaker be installed in a 120 volt AC power circuit? A, in series with the hot conductor only. All right, Alpha 09, what should be done to all external ground rods or earth connections? And the answer is bond them together with heavy wire or conductive strap. Now there specifically are guidelines in how you bond ground rods or what are called earthing rods. You can look up the NEC code, the November Echo Charlie code on how to do that effectively. And I highly recommend you do so. What hazard is caused by charging or discharging a battery too quickly? 
and it is overheating or outgassing. Both could be bad for the longevity of your battery and your safety. <laughs> Alpha 11, what hazards exist in a power supply immediately after turning off? B, there's charge still stored in the filter capacitors. So keep that in mind. You may have to discharge the capacitors if you needed to work on your power supply or you just need to wait the appropriate amount of time to do so. Alpha 12, which of the following precaution, precautions should be taken when measuring high voltage with a voltmeter? B, ensure the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. Very important, you'll burn that thing up pretty fast. All right, that was section A, moving right into section B. Bravo 01, which of the following is a good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection? C, ensure the connections are short and direct. Lightning wants to take the most efficient path to ground in most situations, so keep them short, keep them like big. <laughs> Bulky is another word I guess I would use. That's why so many people like to use strap, copper strap. Um, very effective for grounding. Bravo Zero Two. What is required when climbing an antenna tower? D. All of these choices are correct. A. Have sufficient training on safe tower climbing techniques. Yes. B. Use appropriate tie-off to the tower at all times. Yes. And C. Always wear an approved climbing harness. Triple yes. Um, I would go so far as to make sure that if you're new to antenna tower climbing or anything related to that, that you seek the help of people that know um, what they're doing. It's true, you can watch the YouTube videos and read the things online, but you, you really should uh, interface with somebody who knows it personally very well. Bravo 03, under what circumstance is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? And the answer is D, never. There you go. You got to have somebody to make sure to video it when you fall. I'm kidding. Bravo 04. Which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. Very important. B05. What is the purpose of a safety wire through a turnbuckle used to tension guy lines? And it's B, prevent the loosening of the turnbuckle from vibration. Bravo 06, what is the minimum safe distance from a power line to allow when installing an antenna? Hopefully this one is obvious, but it is D, enough so that if the antenna falls, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power wires. This is, you do not get anywhere near powers with your antenna, your wires, your body, anything. So yes. Bravo 07. Which of the following is an important safety rule to remember when using a crank up tower? It is C. This type of tower must not be climbed unless it is retracted or mechanical safety locking devices have been installed. I don't even want to think about being on the top of one of those and holding it and having it drop. What, do you, what happens to your hands? Ugh, shocking. Bravo 08, which is a proper grounding method for a tower? D, separate eight foot ground rods for each tower leg bonded to the tower and each other. That is proper. Bravo 09, why should you avoid attaching an antenna to a utility pole? The antenna could contact high voltage power supply or power lines. Yes. Which of the following is true when installing grounding connectors used for lightning protection? C, sharp bends must be avoided. Um, again, path to ground, efficient path to ground. Bends give lightning somewhere to drop off of. Bravo 11, which of the following establish, establishes grounding requirements for an amateur radio tower or antenna? And that is local electrical codes, option B. Again, I will remember, uh, remind to say NEC code, November Echo Charlie. Go check those out. The last section of the last sub element in the question pool is Charlie 01. What type of radiation are radio signals? It is D, non ionizing radiation. So if anybody asks you, you're not going to get radiated 
uh, from your amateur radio station in the cancerous level. Charlie02, at which of the following frequencies does maximum permissible exposure have the lowest value? Speaking of radiation, it's not ionizing, yes, but being around the antenna, you are going to get radiation from your antenna hitting you or potentially other people. And we do want to decrease that where possible or to keep the antenna from a close enough location to people where they could be injured. And yeah, there are injuries that, injuries that we can talk about. But the frequency with the lowest permissible exposure value is B50 megahertz. Charlie03, how does the allowable power density for RF safety change if duty cycle changes from 100% to 50%? Uh, C, it increases by a factor of two. So you basically have uh, less range that you need to be far away from the antenna, which could be good or bad, just to keep that in mind. There are calculators that you can look up online if you go to ARRL exposure calculator, RF exposure calculator, that will help you out. Charlie04, what factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station antenna? D, all of these choices are correct. A, frequency and power level of the RF field. B, distance from the antenna to a person. And C, the radiation pattern of the antenna. Charlie05, why do exposure limits vary with frequency? D, the human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than others. Interesting. So maybe the body will antenna. Charlie06, which of the following is an acceptable method to determine whether your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? And the answer to this is D, all choices are correct. A, by calculation based on the FCC OET Bulletin 65. B, by calculation based on computer modeling. And C, by measurement of field strength using calibrated equipment. Charlie 07, what hazard is created by touching an antenna during transmission? And here's where you can get uh, some actual physical injury from an antenna that is in transmission. B, you can get an RF burn to skin. Now this is non-ionizing radiation, but it is still energy that you are radiating from the antenna. And this is most likely seen in the form of what we call an RF burn on your hand or something like that. And it, it closely resembles like uh, getting a topical burn uh, more than anything. Charlie08, which of the following actions can reduce exposure to RF radiation? And it's A, relocate antennas, right? Get, get the antenna away from the people uh, that are too close based on the exposure guidelines. Charlie09, how can you make sure your station stays in compliance with the FCC safety regulations? And it is B, by reevaluating the station whenever an item in the transmitter or antenna system is changed. And again, there's all kinds of calculations you can do uh, for making sure that RF exposure is followed to the best degree based on the frequencies that you use. Charlie10. Why is duty cycle one of the factors used to determine safe RF radiation exposure levels? And it's A, it affects the average exposure to radiation. Duty cycle is when not just transmitting of your radio, but at which point it is like full power output. So if I'm using something like Morse code, when I key down, that's 100% duty cycle. If I'm using a mode like frequency modulation, that is also a high duty cycle. So is digital modes. Single sideband is not as high of a duty cycle, and that affects what exposure calculations we do because it affects the average time that someone may be potentially being exposed to RF radiation. Charlie 11, what is the definition of duty cycle during the averaging time for RF exposure? And it's C, the percentage of time that a transmitter is transmitting. That's it. How does RF radiation differ from ionizing radio, uh, radiation? And this is in parentheses, in parentheses radioactivity. And it is A, RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause chemical changes in cells and damage DNA. 
And that's what separates ionizing from non-ionizing radiation. It's still radiating, but that energy is not enough to do sufficient damage to DNA, which could lead to cancer. Charlie 13, the last question. Who is responsible for ensuring that no person is exposed to RF energy above the FCC exposure limits? And the answer is B, the station licensee. In other words, you, the operator. Boy, howdy. Well, I had fun making all these videos for you all. I hope you enjoyed them. To reiterate, make sure you go check out the links in the description, particularly to hamstudy.org. Go to the website, take the practice test there, come back to these videos and get the assistance you need based on their recommendations of which sub element you're having trouble with. There is links in Amazon to the Gordon West books that I really like for those that prefer reading something. And if you like audiobooks, uh, probably better than I've done here, then go check out the Fast Track series that is available on Audible. They also go into general and extra, which I have not redone yet for the new question pool. So, hey, maybe look forward to that in the future. I really hope you enjoyed these. I really would love to hear your feedback. So if these were helpful to you, come back and let me know you got your license or that you're going through and studying right now. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, 73.